I've always had fun in business. Never, if ever I wrote a business book, I'd call call it Fun Way to a Fortune. Dick Smith got the idea for what he called, or what the, became known as, Dick Smith's Fun Way into Electronics. Making electronics fun was all the rage back in those days. It's it's what you did to get people to buy your particular kit, be it a, a Dick Smith Fun Way kit. Electronic kits were, became very popular, and it was also the making of Dick Smith's career. Not many people realise that the idea came from a book, the Modern World Book of Hobbies, that was given to me in 1952. I would have been eight years of age. It allowed, allowed me to make a two-valve radio without using a soldering iron by screwing the parts into a bit of a timber. And that's where the Funway kit came from and the Funway idea. It was certainly this, the first collection of kits that had been done with a book. Those books are actually sold separately, so you could buy them before and decide what kits you were going to make. Well, it was very, really important as a business item because it, it introduced young people to electronics and made it fun to build projects. I remember the Dick Smith Funway and Electronics, and I know a lot of people got their start there. I went through all of the Dick Smith Funway series. Just a great time to, um, you know, to get into kits. They got into just about every school. Funny enough, there was some books in the school. There was actually this Dick Smith Funway and Electronics book, so I got those. Or you could buy the kit and then buy the book to uh, cover how to make it. Because they simplified how to learn it. It had a lot of information inside and you could learn skills as well as circuit theory. There were also little bits about the radio pioneers and things like how to use a multimeter, explaining radio and various things. So they brought a bit of life to electronics. So I do think that uh, having kits and books, or a instruction book that goes with a kit is a very useful way of, of building a project because when you want to build a project you want success. You could build kits and and learn from them and, and learn what components were. So he made it fun. The funny thing is I didn't even know how to s pronounce some of the words like capacitor. And we go, go ride to a Dick Smith store and, and pick up a, a kit and, and take it home and build it over the weekend. And as a kid, you know, you'd run down there and you'd buy a kit and you'd make it up and you'd see what it did or what it didn't do. The projects were all very interesting. I, I, I remember always wanting to actually get the next kit. The one that sticks out particularly was probably the FM radio transmitter. The bug, being able to, you know, transmit and pick it up on an FM radio. That was pretty cool to, at that age. The Dick Smith kit was big because um, it was something to latch onto as a self-contained project. You could get it up and running with a lot of success, it had good guidance, and the fact that there was a physical store you could go to was really important as well, I reckon. Electronic fun way and kids. People developed an interest from there. They'd build a simple little kit and then they'd come in as teenagers and then young adults to get more components, to build other kits which are more advanced. So it was a great way, while you learnt about electronics, to, to start maybe even a career in electronics, which a lot of people went on to do. Most kits did have instructions or a backup article in the magazines at the time, like Electronics Australia, but it was good to have a coloured, well-described book to go with it. I can remember my first project. Project 10 in Funway 1, an electronic music maker. Every experience you, you learn something from, and so you try one of these projects, and if you've had some success and learned something from it, you might try another. They were huge. I mean, I just read them repeatedly, and I got the, I think I got the green one for a birthday or something like that. So it was just, you know, you read it and read it and read it until it was dog eared. I mean, there was nothing else. There was literally nothing else to explain to somebody who's starting out how to do electronics. The descriptions that we put in were aimed at a lower age, just to make sure that they understood exactly what was going on because in a lot of cases it's not completely obvious. I mean when you throw a switch and a light comes on, yes that's obvious. But when you throw a switch and, and you're talking to someone in the next room, how? The Dick Smith kits were very good at imparting the knowledge but also imparting the passion. You know, you really wanted to build those kits and get something running. The other thing the Funway kits were very good at was to teach you fault finding. So in the case that you did build a kit and it didn't quite work, you could spend a lot of time actually seeing what was wrong, trying to find the fault, and that teaches you a lot of important skills when it comes to repair. The KISS principle applied. We had a certain amount of space that we needed to fill for the description, and everything was done in the same font and size, so we knew exactly how much we were going to say, and made the editorial fit the page. The first one I basically wrote, along with another chap named Sam Voron. The second one I mostly wrote, then Marshall Gill came in on Funway 3. Funway 3 was a series of projects on 
electronic building. It was a, a step up from the Funway 1-2 series in that it was more sophisticated. The, the actual electronics were made on an electronics board, on a PC board as we call them. The main problem I had was thinking of simple projects that would be appealing to the type of hobbyists that were about to build those sort of things. That was probably the worst criteria that I had to face in actually putting the Funway 3 Series together. I basically did the whole thing. But yeah, it was, we had total involvement from basically concept through to print. And then they went out to the stores and look at what happened. They were unbelievably successful. The books were deliberately inexpensive and uh, they sold very, very well. Dick Smith's Funway into Electronics books really helps hundreds of thousands of children and adults. It does cover the full age range. Get into electronics. There was just thousands sold and thousands of kits that went with them as well. So that was another marketing piece of genius from Dick Smith. It was all about the fun experience of going through the instructions and building things and getting that help along the way. So yeah, it was, it was a pretty good marketing ploy. They even went to America. Uh, we sold the books in America. He glamorised the whole process of building electronics. You know, your mates will envy, envy you. And he had all these great slogans and ways of putting things across that you could build this and impress your friends. And indeed, that was absolutely true. But it was the way that it was put together that was innovative. First of all, putting the circuits onto breadboards, then the description of what things did. Having the, the labels in the back of the magazine that many people just cut them out, but if they wanted to keep the, the book intact, just photocopied them and, and you glued those onto the, onto the breadboard. That was all very innovative and that was a big part of the uh, fun way experience, for want of a better word. But the product introduced a lot of people into electronics. Some kids would have used the Funway book to learn how to make a crystal radio or the beer powered radio and find success with electronics that way. Oh, it was absolutely magic. The idea of being able to hear a signal from 50 or more kilometers away with no batteries at all. It really did open up electronics hobby to hundreds of thousands of people. And to think that I had influence on so many people. I remember writing the Funway books. I knew that I wanted something really simple. Now, I thought the Funway books were for hobbyists, people like me. I couldn't believe that they would be used as the basis for some of our computer scientists, some of our radio engineers today. It certainly gave a generation of, of enthusiasts a leg up. It's no surprise that many famous scientists, physicians and electronics uh, technicians and people, professionals in the industry had to start somewhere and a great majority of Australians did start with those Funway books. From time to time I'll be walking say down the street in Melbourne and someone will stop me and say Dick I just want to say hello I'm now in electronics I'm in rocket guidance and I started off with your Funway books makes me feel very proud. Look I'm a scientist because of Funway into electronics. And it is neat that someone can go from working on those simple projects where you're shoving the wires into the wood with a screwdriver to or other electronics manufacturers in Australia. I didn't get a, a, a better dose of knowledge until I got to the TAFE course and started learning incrementally from teachers. Since then, it's still being used in schools even now. I think there's a lot that's still relevant. The basic concepts of how transistors work and resistors and capacitors and discrete components and simple logic gates are as relevant today as they've ever been. Electronics clubs, we get inquiries about where can I buy these darn kits from? I'm hoping that one day at school they'll end up with the Funway book or something similar because I think it's really important you, lose, you learn that practical side of it. If you want to connect an Arduino to a relay, you need to understand how a, a transistor works, for example. So it's, it's important you always have LEDs on projects, no matter how sophisticated the microcontroller might be. You might have a 32-bit arm, but you still might want to have it flash an LED. So Ohm's law and the sort of basic fundamentals that you got from the Funway series are still extremely relevant. The Dick Smith books are still available on eBay, for example, and I have my own set, which I guard closely. So yes, I still build things. I love it. I've still got my soldering iron. I've still got my workshop. There aren't the exact replicas of those kits available anymore. I, when I left Dick Smith's, I left them with three very, very successful publications. The people who followed didn't do anything to upgrade them. I think there's just really like a lack of, of good text like that. I decided to do a similar thing 
with JCAR Electronics and we have what we call our short circuits theories. And there's a whole set of designs in those publications most of which came from silicon chip, I might add. Of course, we had a hard part in developing those. So people do start off with those publications and they are promoted in the schools. The, the short circuits books recognise emerging technology, which the Dick Smith product didn't. That's no criticism of Dick Smith. He'd left after by that time. I suppose the difference is the information revolution. In the past, we just had Funway books and a few other books. Now, the world's your oyster as far as information. With the Funway book, you did have the information organised. It was in a particular structure. Whereas with the internet, you might be dipping between multiple websites, videos, and for a beginner, that can be somewhat daunting. Looking back over a career, it's hard to overestimate the importance of, of, of uh, books like the Funway and Electronics and the, and the kits, uh, because they give uh, uh, young people a, 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 conf a sense of confidence to go into a, into a complicated domain and to forge a career. My name is Gough Louis and I remember the fun weekends. My name is Paul Payton, I'm the chairman of the Melbourne Electric Vehicle Group. I got started in electronics on those with Dick Smith and with Funway projects on those in the, um, in the early 80s. At the moment I run a tech blog site where I tear apart things, look at how they work inside, I build things and I document them there or I modify things. Sometimes I salvage as well as review products. I'm Rob Gannon and I started off my interest in electronics when I got a Dick Smith Funway to Electronics book and kit for Christmas when I was a kid. Hey, my name's John Spencer. Um, I got started with the Funway wow, stuff much the same way as most people did. My parents bought it for me for Christmas one year. Since then I've just loved tinkering with electronics. I've done it as a career. Uh, now I repair drones, I work on 3D printers and do all sorts of great cool stuff. I recently got my doctorate in civil and environmental engineering and uh, that is built upon my undergraduate degree which is the first class honours in photovoltaics and solar energy. I'm a technical specialist and uh, a systems administrator. I've, I've been in computers and technology for pretty much my entire career. My name's Adam Mead. I got started in uh, electronics through the Funway into Electronics series and that led me on a path directly to software development, believe it or not, via microelectronics. And now I'm developing uh, iOS applications. I'm Lachlan Maher. Um, I'm a design engineer. I manufacture industrial inspection equipment and uh, I started off with Dick Smith Funway kits making a uh, robot back in primary school with my friend Michael and this is it here you can see we've got the uh, Dick Smith mini colour organ which is on its belly that uh, led me into a career in electrical engineering um, making inspection equipment and we've been incorporating robotic um, apparatus actuators and things into that these days. My name's Peter Parker I got started in Dick Smith Funway kits at the age of 10 which led me to a lifelong interest in electronics. Hi, my name's Andy Jomi. I'm a founder of the Melbourne Hackerspace and I got into electronics as a kid uh, through reading and learning from many sources but the Dick Smith Funway kits were instrumental because they pitched at a level of comprehension as a, ch as a child I was able to understand. Many other sources were aimed for professionals and so and that led to my career which has fundamentally been a software developer who's always worked closely with hardware engineers so I started at Cray Research for, for, many, year for many years working with engineers where we had to diagnose down to the chip level. I uh, worked in home automation and more recently a co-founder of LifeX which is a, was doing the early prototyping on a consumer electronics uh, Wi-Fi light bulb.